Welcome to Public Health On Call, a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, where we bring evidence, experience, and perspective to make sense of today's leading health challenges. If you have questions or ideas for us, please send an email to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. This is Lindsay Smith-Rogers. Today, how food industry giants like General Mills are capitalizing on the hashtag anti-diet movement on social media. Sasha Chavkin, a correspondent with The Examination, returns to the podcast to talk with Dr. Josh Sharfstein about his latest investigation into food companies that are co-opting efforts to push back on unrealistic body images and diet culture in order to promote their own products. Let's listen. If you've ever been to Starbucks and you have gotten one of their brownies, what are you doing? Having a better relationship with food, not counting calories, allows me to go to Starbucks and get whatever the heck I want and not feel guilty about it. Here's what's missing about conversations about processed foods. They're not inherently bad for you. Thank goodness for processed foods. Be cautious of wellness cultures, messaging around what you should and shouldn't be eating. Because over time, it can lead you to being afraid of all food. Sasha Chavkin, it's great to have you back on Public Health On Call. You're a journalist with The Examination, and you are here to talk about your latest investigation into the food industry. It's great to see you. Thanks, Josh. Now, when we last talked, you were watching TikToks all day, at least in my mind, and you were noticing that the food industry was paying dietitians to endorse their products. Can you just remind us of what that first investigation was about? Right. We did an investigation last fall that showed that food companies were sponsoring dietitians on social media to promote their products and talking points, sometimes without proper disclosure of their financial relationships. Now, this new investigation is about the intersection between the food industry and what might be called the anti-diet movement. Could you just explain what the anti-diet movement is? The anti-diet movement is an effort to push back against weight discrimination, obsession with unrealistic body images, um, and it's been around for decades. What we found in our investigation is that food companies are essentially co-opting these messages in order to promote their products and to advance their agenda. It seems like there's a lot of validity to concerns about obsessions with diet. But what you're saying is that the food industry is sort of capitalizing on that to try to sell more of their products, particularly products that may not be healthy. Exactly. The anti-diet movement is a legitimate movement uh, that has a lot of popular support. But what we saw is that food companies, when one company in particular, General Mills, are using that to serve their own ends. General Mills sponsored a study into food shaming, which is a major concern for the anti-diet movement, which found that people who reported being food shamed suffered mental health problems, felt isolated, uh, and were also more likely to avoid the cereal aisle in grocery stores. They then used the results of that study to work with dietitians who promoted their cereals using the hashtag derail the shame on social media. And they even made the argument that a proposed federal rule that would add health information to the front of packages would be food shaming consumers. And they said they were doing everything they could to oppose it for that reason. I'm trying to wrap my head around this. I think of the anti-diet movement as basically calling for a more healthy relationship with food. But what you're saying is that the companies are injecting into that movement the idea that you should just be able to eat their products whenever you want without worrying about the consequences. Yeah. One of the most striking findings from our investigation was that some of the leaders of the anti-diet movement themselves are not okay with what General Mills is doing. 
We spoke to leaders of the group Health at Every Size, which focuses on equal access to health care for heavier people. And they said that General Mills sponsoring registered dietitians to promote cereal does nothing to advance their movement. We also spoke with Elise Resch, who's a co-founder of Intuitive Eating, which is a movement that focuses on listening to internal cues about food and is often used to help people with eating disorders. But she said big food companies that use anti-diet slogans are just trying to make more money um, and that the intuitive eating movement is being co-opted. Now, in some cases, you wrote about how companies are sending out their products, in particular cereals, to social media influencers hoping that they will amplify these anti-diet messages. That's right. The Derail the Shame campaign, which we talk about in our story, features a number of dietitian influencers who are holding up cereal boxes that were provided to them by General Bills with their names added to the front of the cereal box. They hold up these personalized cereal boxes as they then repeat some of the company's talking points about the health benefits of cereal and why why people who eat cereal should not be food shamed for doing so. It's it's very interesting because people can get a lot of messages from social media, obviously, and they can be quite influential. And in fact, people can come together and push back on problematic uh, messages in, in culture like over dieting. But this is turning that upside down in a way. Yeah, One of our most interesting findings was seeing how the anti-diet message is being distorted on social media. We looked at 1,500 posts that use anti-diet hashtags, and many of them talk about things like eating disorders and weight loss and the things that the movement was meant to address. But we also saw that the most commonly discussed food item in the data set was ice cream, with dozens of videos talking about how ice cream is unfairly vilified by society. Then you have anti-diet dietitians in this data set holding up Reese's and tricks. Stop. You're making me hungry. I recall one that you showed me where a dietitian, if I'm not mistaken, was lovingly looking at a brownie from Starbucks and saying, how can we refuse ourselves these types of treats? That's a common theme in these videos. These dietitians will eat um, brownies or ice cream or some other high sugar, high fat food to talk about how it demonstrates their healthy relationship with food. Now, it's important to understand that many of these folks treat people with eating disorders. That's part of what they're speaking to. But that nuance gets lost on social media. And what you get is a dietitian who is lovingly eating a brownie. I thought about playing that for the podcast, but I thought people in their cars might just like immediately be compelled to drive and buy one of the brownies. So I'm not going to do that for the sake of our listeners. But it it really was eye-opening for me to appreciate the just the strangeness of how social media can take a concept like a healthy relationship with food and wind up with what is most obviously not encouraging a healthy relationship with food. Yeah, it's very paradoxical. And I think a lot of the dietitians and other folks on social media are speaking sincerely, but you can also see why this kind of message is really appealing to the food industry, because it's people telling you, eat what you want, don't worry about these messages out there demonizing food, they're just food shaming, and so you should go about your life and not worry about it. Well... 
Sasha Chadkin, thank you so much for talking to us about your latest uh, installment and uh, good luck with however many more social media videos you will be watching. Thanks, Josh. Great to speak with you. Public Health On Call is a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, produced by Joshua Sharfstein, Lindsay Smith-Rogers, Stephanie Desmond, and Grace fernandez Ciciri. Audio production by J.B. Arbogast, Holly Cardinal, Spencer Greer, Matthew Martin, and Philip Porter, with support from Chip Hickey. Distribution by Nick Moran. Production management by Catherine Ricardo. Social media run by Grace fernandez Ciciri. Analytics by Eliza Rosen. If you have questions or ideas for us, please send us an email to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. Thank you for listening. Thank you.